Alright, so I've got some exciting news for you guys today because the Galaxy S9 Plus has just received the One UI 2.5 update. Lots of new features from the Note 20 Ultra being carried over to the two and a half year old Galaxy S9 Plus. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the new features that this update brings to the Galaxy S9 Plus. And it goes without saying, if you enjoy watching my videos, don't forget to subscribe. We are about to reach 50,000 subscribers. And also do follow me on my social media accounts. I'll include all the links in the video description. Okay, so I'm gonna start this video off by showing you guys everything that is new in the camera. And inside the camera, we are going to pro video mode because the pro video mode has seen some major upgrades. So now when you start recording, you will be able to change the camera's ISO and the shutter speed while the video recording is going on. Previously, you could not do this. So on One UI 2.1, if you were to record a video in the pro video mode, the ISO and the shutter speed would get locked. But after the One UI 2.5 update, you can change the shutter speed and the ISO while the video recording is going on. And in addition to that, Samsung has added histogram. So now you can enable histogram by tapping this icon. And additionally, the camera also shows you the resolution and the frame rate at which you are recording. So we are recording at UHD, that is 4K at 60 FPS. And this is available only in the pro video mode. The normal video mode, you will not get that option. And speaking of the resolution and the frame rate, if you go to settings, you will see a new option over here which says pro video size. So the pro video resolution and the frame rate has been separated out. And if we go inside the pro video size, you will see a new aspect ratio 21 is to nine. So this will give you a slightly wider view, thus giving your videos a slightly more cinematic appeal. And speaking of cinematic, let's go back to the pro video size. Samsung has also added the 24 FPS option. So videos that are recorded at 21 is to 9 aspect ratio in 24 FPS, they kind of have that cinematic movie like appeal to them. But the thing is, if you start recording your videos at 24 FPS, you can probably see the video gets choppy. So this is why I recommend that you record your videos at 60 or 30 FPS, unless you are trying to get that cinematic movie like effect in your videos also just so you know the new aspect ratio and the new 24 fps option is only available for pro video size if you go to the rear video size you will not find the new aspect ratio nor you will find the 24 fps option now there are a couple of features that are missing in the pro video compared to say newer flagship like the note 10 plus but i will show you what's missing at the end of this video and other than that there are a couple of new features like if we go to single take mode, now we have a manual timer. I hope you guys can see. So this wasn't there before. Also, if you have the motion photo option turned on, motion photos now records audio. So this is a motion photo that I took just now. What's up everybody? So as you guys can hear, there is audio in motion photos. And this is a motion photo that I recorded earlier. As you guys can see, no audio. So that wraps it up for the camera. Let us move on to the other features. This update also brings live captions to the Galaxy S9 Plus and live captions was one of the most requested features on this phone. So how do you enable live captions? Press the volume button and expand this menu and you can turn on live captions from over here. So what does live captions do? Live captions will generate subtitles or captions whenever you play back an audio or a video which has speech in it. Let me demonstrate. So I'll be playing back this video. This is my own video. And you guys will see the phone will generate subtitles. Pick up the TV to the PC. Something ain't right. The picture quality is not what you expected. And so as you guys can see, the phone is generating subtitles or captions in real time. And you can place this bar wherever you want. So this is a super useful feature. It will allow you to understand what the person is saying in the video without actually turning up your volume. And yes, it also works for audios. If you play back an audio in the audio player, the phone will display captions, but it doesn't work for music because if you play back music, it's just gonna show the music is playing back. But nonetheless, very useful feature. So now let me show you the most amazing feature that this update brings from the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra onto the S9 Plus. Well, I'm talking about Samsung Wireless Dex. So 
For wireless decks to work, you will need a TV which has Miracast support. And then grab your Galaxy S9 Plus, drop down the notification panel and locate DeX. And over here, if your TV is supported, you will see it in this list. And then from this list, just select your TV and that is pretty much all there is to it. And now we have Samsung DeX running wirelessly without any docks or cables on our TV. So let me show you this feature in a little bit more detail. One of the most amazing and wonderful features of Samsung wireless decks is that you can plug in a standard computer keyboard and a mouse into one of the USB ports of the TV. And this allows you to use the keyboard and the mouse as input devices. So as you can see, I can type using the keyboard. And this pretty much transforms the TV into a personal computer, complete with a keyboard and mouse. It kind of gives you Windows like experience as you can see you've got icons on your desktop and whenever you double click an icon the apps open up in a window just like they do on a Windows PC although this is running Android. And this is actually true multitasking happening on the phone. Keep in mind this is not running on the TV. All of the applications are on the phone and they are all open together simultaneously and you can work on any one of them, have them open side by side and they appear just like applications do on a Windows PC. And while you are using Samsung DeX, the screen of the phone is off. So it's not like the screen is turned on all the time when you are using DeX. But the thing is you can turn the display on and the phone is fully functional. So you can do stuff on your phone as well as use wireless DeX. So if I want to make a quick phone call, I can do that. Just grab the phone, hit the power button, make a phone call and that is it. And this shows you how capable the phone really is even though this is a two year old phone with only six gigabytes of RAM. Amazing, right? And you can do pretty much anything you wish. Like for example, you can give presentations, create documents, text your friends over Snapchat, or show your photos and videos on a big screen. Also, when I was playing back this 4K video, there was no stuttering, no lag or any frame drop. So that's a good sign. So you can also use the DeX functionality to show photos and videos on a big screen. And also, whenever you play back a video or an audio file, the audio will actually play back on your TV speaker, not on the phone. So that's a good thing. And if you have a home theater plugged in into your TV, the sound will actually play back on the home theater. So this will let you enjoy music on big speakers and just so you know my home theater does not even come with Bluetooth built in. So the audio is getting transferred from the phone to the TV wirelessly and then from the TV to the home theater system. So this is actually one of the coolest features ever. Now if you have an LG TV that comes with one of these magic remotes, you can use the magic remote as a mouse. And for this to work, there is no additional configuration required. It works automatically once you connect your phone to the TV. And what you can do is go to settings, then go to Samsung DeX and go to the keyboard setting and change this to TV or monitor and then enable show on-screen keyboard in Samsung DeX. So as you guys can see, this provides you with an on-screen keyboard that you can use to type stuff. So this eliminates the need of a keyboard and a mouse on LG smart TVs. Just use the magic remote as an input device. I'm actually surprised to see that Samsung DeX is even more compatible with the LG TV that I've got. And this TV is from 2016. It's not a new TV. Very impressive to see this kind of compatibility with LG WebOS TVs. And yes, it is completely possible to play simple games like Candy Crush using the Magic Remote. They are completely playable. I've also noticed that the input lag is very minimal. Although that might depend on your TV, but for me, there was absolutely no lag and the game was playable. Also, what I have noticed is that the keyboard does not always work on LG TVs. So what you can do is plug in the keyboard's receiver into the phone using a USB type C to type A adapter. And then you will be able to use a physical keyboard to type stuff while you are using the wireless DeX functionality. But if you don't have an LG TV and if your TV does not support keyboard or a mouse, you can use the phone as a touchpad. Drop down the notification panel and select the touchpad option and this will let you use the phone's display as a touchpad. Pretty cool, isn't it? 
I know someone's gonna ask me about gaming on Samsung DeX, so here are my thoughts. Games with simple touch input like Candy Crush, they work perfectly fine. You can use a mouse or the magic remote to play this game, but you will not be able to use keyboard. See the thing is majority of the games on play store are made for touch input so in majority of the games keyboard does not work so long story short this feature isn't really meant for gaming and it's more of a productivity slash business tool but still you can get away playing simple games on samsung decks i honestly think this is very impressive for a phone to do especially when the phone is two and a half years old kudos to samsung if you use a lot of Snapchat, then you probably know what Bitmoji is. So here's the thing. This update allows you to set your very own Bitmoji as your always on display wallpaper, just like this. And I'm just using my friend's account to demonstrate. So how does this work? Well, first off, make sure that your Bitmoji app is up to date. Then drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to lock screen. Then make sure always on display is turned on then tap on clock style and select always on display over here you will need to pick a clock which allows you to set images and gif as your always on display then tap on bitmoji and pick your bitmoji from over here that represents your style let's select this one just to demonstrate you can resize and then press on done and that is all there is to it now when you push your phone to sleep you will see your bitmoji on the always on display the edge panel has also seen a slight redesign. So this is how the new edge panel looks like. And this is exactly how the edge panel looks like on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And there is a new feature that has been added to the edge panels. Now you can save your favorite split screen applications in the edge panel. And whenever you tap on them, those two applications will always open up in the split screen mode view. So this is kind of useful. So let me show you how does this work. So first off, you will need to open up the applications that you want to save in the split screen mode view. For example, I will open up YouTube and I will open up the web browser. And now I will go to recents, tap over here and select open in split screen view. Then I will open up the web browser. Now, if you tap over here, you will see a new icon that lets you save these applications as a favorite in the edge panel. So just tap over here and that is all. Now these applications have been saved in the edge panels as a favorite. So if I open up edge panel and tap over here, you'll notice YouTube and Chrome will open up in the split screen mode view. So this is a super useful feature. Another new feature, if you have any videos in your gallery, the phone will give you a live preview of the video in the thumbnail view. So this is a cool feature. Samsung keyboard has also seen an update so now you can search and send YouTube video links directly from within the keyboard. So tap over here and tap on YouTube. Then select the search button and search for the video that you want to send. So I can just search for my channel if I want to send any videos. So here it is. And if I want to send a video, I'll just select. So let's get back to the keyboard and then I will send it over. So this makes sending YouTube video links very, very easy. You don't need to open up the YouTube app, search the video over there, then copy and paste link. Just search directly from the Samsung keyboard using this option. And another thing that is new, Samsung keyboard now supports landscape split screen keyboard. So if we go to landscape, I'll press on these three dots and then I will tap on mode. So now you have the split keyboard view. This makes typing with two hands very, very easy. Even though this is not a Galaxy Note series phone, Samsung has still updated the built-in Samsung Notes application to the latest version. So this is the same application that you get on the S20 and the Note 20 series. So first off, to view your old notes, you will need to install a plugin and convert all your old notes to the new format because the old format is not compatible with the new notes. So let me show you how to do that. So first, You'll need to install the add-on, so we'll wait. So once the add-on has been installed, just tap on the node that you want to convert and then select the convert option. And your phone will convert the old node into the new version. So that's it, the node has been converted and now we can go ahead and edit the node. And you also might have noticed that the background is now black, which I like because black background gives you less strain on the eyes. And I really like this new version of Samsung Notes because now you can highlight and annotate your own written notes, which you could not do earlier. So tap on this icon 
and select the highlighter option. Pick your favorite color from over here. I'll select this one. And now you can highlight text which you could not do earlier. So this is a really nice feature. And if you want to annotate, select the pen and pick your color from over here. Change the thickness and now you can go ahead and annotate. So that's really cool. And if you tap on this book icon, the notes will enter into reading mode. So if I try and scroll right now, you see I cannot really scroll. So if you tap on this book icon, the notes will enter into reading mode. So now you can scroll using your finger. Now by default, the background is black, but you can change the color by tapping on these three icons and select background color and pick one from over here, whichever you like. I like this one and tap on done. So you see new background color and speaking of background color, you can also apply a different template. So tap on these three dots, select page template and pick one from over here. Let's try this one. So as you guys can see, we now have a different page template. Another new feature in Samsung notes is that they have introduced folders for better management. So tap on manage folders to create a new folder and I can just create a new one called social and tap on done. And I can go back and move the notes to the new folder. So how do you move the notes to a new folder? Long press and select move. And now you can move the notes to a different folder. And if I tap over here and tap on social, as you guys can see that new note that we just edited is in the social folder. And you can also create a new note by tapping over here. And now if I go back, you'll see this note is in the social folder. So that's how you create and move notes to a different folder. This new Samsung Notes application also allows you to import PDFs. So you see that PDF icon over here, tap on this and pick a PDF from your storage. I'll select this one because that's the only PDF I've got on my phone. Anyways, once you import a PDF, the phone also allows you to annotate and highlight stuff. So again, I'll tap on this icon and select the highlighter. Again, you can pick any color, change the highlighter type, and this will allow you to highlight stuff in the PDF file. And you can also annotate by selecting the pen and you can change the color if you like. So imagine if you have to sign a PDF, it becomes super easy with this feature. So guys, we are almost at the end of the video. And the final feature that I'm going to show you is the haptic feedback for the navigation gestures and the camera. So go to settings, go to sounds and vibrations, scroll down to system sound and vibration control. And over here, you will see a new option, navigation gestures and camera feedback. So enabling navigation gestures will give you slight vibration whenever you navigate your phone using the navigation gestures and camera feedback will provide you with haptic feedback whenever you take pictures, zoom in, change modes and more. So these two are new. So what is actually different with the One UI 2.5 updates Pro video mode on the Galaxy S9 Plus versus say a new flagship, the Galaxy S10 Plus? Well, glad you asked. Let's launch cameras on both of these phones and we will go to the Pro video mode. So first off, you can see there is no audio meter on the Galaxy S9 series. This is kind of a useful feature. I use it on my main camera to measure how is the audio input like. And secondly, if you scroll over here, you will see this microphone icon. This is also not available on the S9. And if I tap on this, you get five options. So the first one is omnidirectional capture sound equally from all directions. And the second one is best for capturing sounds coming towards the front of the phone. And finally, rear best for capturing sounds coming towards the back of the phone. And you can also toggle between USB microphone and the phone's internal microphone by tapping on this icon. And the One UI 2.5 update also allows you to use the microphone that is on your Bluetooth headset to capture audio while you are recording videos. And lastly, you can also change the audio level. These features are unfortunately nowhere to be seen on the Galaxy S9 Plus. But I think there is a hope because check this out. If I connect my USB microphone to the Galaxy S9 Plus. So here I've got my blue snowball condenser microphone. If I connect this to the phone, you'll see that the LED lights up. 
and now if I launch camera and go to video mode and if I start recording, the phone says recording audio through USB microphone. So this feature was not there before on the Galaxy S9 Plus. This is actually new. But the catch is this feature does not work. So the phone is still recording audio using the internal microphone. But to be honest, I think this is a bug and I think Samsung will fix this in the near future. And yes, I have tested it before and after the update. It doesn't work, but it does work on the Galaxy S10 series. And yes, the phone is able to detect the microphone because if we go to the internal voice recorder, then the phone will be able to use the external mic to record the audio. So if I record audio now, it will actually capture sound through the external microphone. But in the camera, it's not able to do that even though it shows me that it is recording audio through USB microphone. So this is the audio that is being recorded via the internal microphone of the phone. I'm gonna stop, gonna plug in the USB microphone, launch the camera and start recording now. And this is the audio that is coming through the USB microphone. You can tell there is a massive difference when it comes to quality. The audio which is being captured through the USB microphone is more full and it has more detail in it. And finally guys, another feature that does not work is the Wi-Fi quality information on nearby Wi-Fi routers. This unfortunately does not work so the phone doesn't show very fast, fast, normal or slow even though that this feature is turned on in the settings. It doesn't even work on my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and yes, just to confirm show network quality info is actually turned on but the phone doesn't show the Wi-Fi network is fast or slow. And I'm not gonna show you the available Wi-Fi networks here because it's got someone's phone number and real names. But yeah, it doesn't work, so don't be surprised if it doesn't work on your phone. But all said and done, I think this update is awesome because it gave the Galaxy S9 Plus a brand new lease of life. And it brought the phone on level with the new flagships like the Note 20 Ultra, at least when it comes to software. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a comment and hit the like button. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos on the Galaxy S9 Plus and trust me, whenever there is a new software update for these phones, I will make a video. So thank you guys for watching, stay tuned for more videos and I will see you guys in the next video.